Hey everyone, now that we have a good understanding of HL7, let's look at how the workflow matches the message flow. Our patient is a 45-year-old college professor with complaints of a massive headache, nausea, and vomiting. He is new to the area and has no previous admissions to the hospital. The ER registr registration clerk wheels in her cart and registers our patient in the hospital information system, more commonly called the EMR which stands for electronic medical record. When she completes the form on her cow, that's a computer on wheels, and clicks the submit button, what type of message is going to be generated? What will the HL7 message dialog be like? Registering a new patient in the HIS will trigger an outbound ADT A04 message to the interface engine. The interface engine will validate the message structure and send an ACK message back to the HIS. A new visit to the hospital for a new ailment will get a full registration, which is why it's an A04 message. Had the patient been previously treated for this condition, the ADT message would be an A01, which is a admit visit notification message. The interface engine will duplicate the original A04 message and format it to the specifications for the RIS and PACs. It will then send each of those systems the correctly formatted A04 message and they will answer back with an ACK. After our patient is examined by the ER physician, she will place orders in the EMR. What matters to us is the head CT with contrast order. The ORM will get sent to the interface engine. Again, the interface engine will validate the message structure, send an ACK back to the hospital information system, and then send the ORM on to the RIS. The RIS will add the accession number. This is very important because the accession number is what the PACS uses to match up the images from the modalities to the demographic information contained in the order. The RIS will then send an ORM, including the accession number, onto the PACS, and the PACS will answer back with an ACK. Now, at this point, this is the configuration for Hack General Hospital. All systems are not configured this way. It could be another way to do this would be to have the order go from the interface engine to the RIS, have the RIS add the accession number, send it back to the interface engine, and then have the interface engine send it over the PACS. It's another possible configuration. This is the way we're going to set up Hack General Hospital. So I just want to give you an idea of another possible way it could be done out in the real world. During the patient interview, however, it's revealed that the patient is allergic to iodine. They can't do a CT head with contrast, so the tech will have to modify the order to be a CT head without contrast. The ORM will get sent to the interface engine. Since this is a change to an existing order, this ORC segment would reflect this with SC, not NW, in ORC1. Notice that now the RIS is the message originating system, so the message direction changes slightly. The RIS sends to the interface engine. The IE validates, acknowledges, copies, translates, and sends the updated ORM to the HIS. Also, the RIS will send the updated order to the PACS. The CT tech completes the study, does her quality check, sends the images to PACS, confirms the study is in PACS, then ends the study in RIS. What happens when she ends the study in the radiology information system? It's actually amazing what happens when the tech marks the study completed. The ORR goes to the interface engine, gets validated, copied, formatted, and sent to the HIS to let the nurse know the study is done. The RIS sends a duplicate to the PACS, which lets the radiologist know the study is ready to be read. In some places you'll see I say message copy, in some places I say message duplicate. That really matters a lot to the interface monkeys. They will get all bent out of shape if you say copy when it's a duplicate and duplicate when it's a copy. We probably don't need to, to know that difference. We just need to know that another message, whether it's a copy of the original or a duplicate of the original, goes to the right place. The IE will do an amazing translation, take the information from the ORR and build an ORM from that to send to the voice recognition system because orders don't go to the voice recognition system until the study is completed. There's nothing to dictate, so it doesn't need the order until it's completed. So. You have the ORR going back to the HIST to let the nurse know that the study is completed. You have the ORR going to PACS to let the radiologist know the study is 
ready to be read. And then you have the ORR going through the interface engine being turned into an ORM. So the full order information goes to the voice recognition system. Notice that ORRs don't get ACKs. You don't, that would be like ACKing another ACK because an ORR is almost like an ACK with just order information built into it. But the ORM does need an ACK. Now the radiologist can review the images and make his report. The last thing he says in the voice recognition system will be sign report. That will sweep the images off his monitor, load the next case to be read, launch a new report template, and what type of message will it generate? The ORU message gets sent, sent from the dictation system to the interface engine. It gets validated, acknowledged, copied, formatted, and sent to the RIS and to the HIS. The RIS will then make a copy of it and send it on to PAX so that the result is now in the HIS, the results in the RIS, the results in the PAX. And all of those messages will get AX. Lucky for a college professor with a migraine, his study was negative. It is determined that the cause was most likely ocular strain during creation of PowerPoint presentations. The ER physician has recommended treatment of pizza and Mountain Dew. Remember, discharge is a two-step process. First is the ADTA16, the pending discharge message. This goes to the interface engine and gets an ACK. Most radiologists radiology systems do not accept an A16 because the pending discharge message is not relevant to the radiology workflow or department. So that'll just go to the HIS. Finally, out the door. The ADT AO3 message gets sent to the interface engine. The IE validates and acknowledges it, then formats it and sends it on to the RIS, which acknowledges it. When you think about it, that was a pretty simple healthcare sequence. The patient got admitted, had one test done, got resulted, the patient was discharged. Those four steps generated 37 HL7 messages. And that's just for one patient. There are easily hundreds of messages being exchanged between radiology systems and the interface engine. If one bad message clogs the interface, everything in radiology comes to a quick stop. And who do they call? You, the PAX admin. Thank you for listening. I'll see you in class.